So I will talk today about explainable AI in healthcare, the pathway to achieve the five zeros gold. Goal. I'm Roland Haas from SciTech, and this has been prepared together with my team and my business partner, Ashok Talukta. So what we are talking today about, I give you a brief introduction, what we do here at SciTech, then I will tell you about the healthcare crisis that we are facing worldwide. I will tell about the five zeros goal and show you what we do in biomedical knowledge graphs. A little bit of AI in healthcare in general to show you what other methods are there. And then we will put it all together to actually discuss how that can be done to achieve the goal of five zeros in medical. So I see just the screen is not visible. Is there a problem with the screen that it's not visible? Roland, if you can go ahead and try and click share your screen again. I'll do. So is it visible? Is the screen visible now? No, not yet. Um, go ahead and start your talk and yes, and we will get uh, the screen share sorted as you go along. So now, okay. Yeah, so um, I was about to talk about the knowledge graphs and uh, what we have here in the system. So now it comes up. I guess I see something coming up here. So is it visible now? Yeah, there we are. So this is a team, the founders of SciTech that we have. And um, this team here represents you know, team members from Germany and India myself, Roland Haas. SciTech is a company in Wendlingen and in India. In Wendlingen, we are here in the Neckerspinnerei, that's a startup center south of Stuttgart. And in India, we're working with Triple ITB, which is uh, an institute, research institute in Bangalore. Now, what we do is we combine symbolic and sub-symbolic AI methods. Um, that means that we have um, both knowledge graphs where we model knowledge in the domain as well as machine learning and deep learning. And we augment that in terms of also using generative AI, responsible AI, explainable, adaptive, and finally trustworthy AI. That is very important because you need to actually validate AI. How can we leverage the vast amount of knowledge that is being generated in the medical field so that we can effectively also bring it to the point of care? That is our mission and the main point here. Let's look at the healthcare crisis. Why is it called a healthcare crisis? Look at some of those numbers here. The avoidable medical errors, that is the third leading cause of death in the US. Avoidable drug adverse effect, that you have a drug, a medication, and it has an adverse effect on you, is a false leading cause of death. 30% of healthcare spending in the US could be considered waste. That's a mind boggling number, especially if you take into account the expenditure of healthcare in the US, which is more than 18% of GDP. This leads to anything between 760 to 935 billion dollars US dollars annual loss that is there. There's also a massive abuse of antibiotics that threatens the effectivity of these drugs and as a wrong or late diagnosis of cancer that can lead to many deaths here. So what's the way how we can actually tackle this? In healthcare we should aim high and that's why we are talking about the five zeros goal here. There should be zero medical errors, zero patient harm, zero medical waste, zero medical abuse, and zero medical frauds. That, of course, is a very ambitious goal, but you see that in many other domains, this goal is actually 
being aimed for. For example, take aerospace domain where really errors are not being accepted. And we should really take the same kind of thought also in this domain, in the medical domain. When we talk about a physician's digital brain, a digital twin, then we have different sources of data that we can integrate into knowledge graphs. This data comes from clinical information, from textbooks, it's from oncology, it's from the internet, and from other areas too. With that, we are constructing knowledge graphs, and these knowledge graphs then can be accessed through an API to bring them to the point of care. This is an example of these knowledge graphs. All in all, we have constructed 12 knowledge graphs that capture biomedical knowledge. This knowledge graph is in disisomics, so symptoms, diseases, and comorbidities are being captured, but also in resistomics, pathonomics, or drugomics. And all this together, you see an example of this knowledge graphs, helps actually to model the domain knowledge in the medical field, which is already there. Now, what are these knowledge graphs? What makes them special? They're both human understandable, but they're also machine understandable because we're using the code systems in the medical domain, controlled vocabularies, like for example, SNOMED clinical terms or ICD or UMLS. And these codes can of course be exchanged by the machines. Now, we have published these type of findings in various conferences. One, for example, last year in the Knowledge Graphs and Somatic Web Conference in Spain. And there we have also talked about very complex knowledge graphs, for example, that capture knowledge on the oncology domain and make it available to the physicians. There are also other AI applications in the medical field that help actually to improve the diagnostics and to reduce the error rate. This is, for example, the analysis of MRI and CT scans. And there's a project group that does do this. Plus, they also do a texture analysis on the area, which allows you to actually even detect genetic mutations before a biopsy is being done. That's very important because in this case, you can actually quickly um, already prepare a potential therapy before you have done a biopsy. So you can extract much more information from this data than is possible otherwise. Roland, apologies for interrupting. Your yeah. screen seems to have frozen. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, news, I do see the new slide sharing. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Continue. Good. So um, when we pull all these things together, what we see is that there are, the data comes from different sources. I talked about the internet, I talked about clinical information and studies. All this is being integrated in different knowledge graphs. These knowledge graphs can be transversed in different ways. And we integrate that also with comorbidity knowledge, disease trajectory knowledge, and cancer trajectory knowledge. Now, how can you actually use this? You can access these knowledge graphs through an API, and then you can build systems on top of that. This is an example of such a system. What we do here is predict a disease. So you can put in symptoms of a patient. The symptoms will be transferred to the codes, the medical codes, for example, ICD, SNOMED, UC, or UMLS. And then the system predicts the possible diseases, gives you a list, which you see in the bottom of these possible diseases, and links to additional information. That is very useful if you want to do differential diagnostics. If you pull all these things together, and this is a prototype we have built that shows how you can actually integrate telemedicine. You see two people talking to each other here on the system itself. You have the diagnostic component, which predicts the different diseases. Then you would like to apply certain medication or suggest certain therapeutic steps. This can be done in such a system that is a web-based user interface, you see. And the doctor then can 
prescribe the medication and automatically it will check through the knowledge graphs I talked about, pragomics for example, if there are any side effects that have to be taken care of. This would reduce massively the potential error rate of a prescription, for example, of a drug, while you have comorbidities that would actually prevent the prescription of this drug and make it not feasible. The same you can do when you look at the claims processing. This is an example of a claim digital twin. Here you extract information from a claim file. You categorize this into the different disease and diagnostic related groups. You extract the main information. And then you can build a system that actually helps you to figure out if a certain suggested therapy will be okay or not. Here you see that, that you can select a category, so a term, different disease, a specific disease. For this specific disease, there are certain drugs. If you treat them, and here's a ATC code of the drug, and you have certain therapies that are actually correct, while many other therapies would not be correct. Now, in the system itself, and going through the knowledge graph and the rules engine, you are able to actually say if this is a correct treatment or not. That prevents, in a very early phase, wrong kind of treatments, wrong medications, and again, can reduce the errors in a massive way. So you see here, one is necessary, the other one is unnecessary. Typically, you know, you would not do that surgery in this particular case. Another way how we have approached the problem is to use large language models to actually customize these large language models and then put them at the point of care. This example here shows how we are customizing ChatGPT, in this case for retrieval augmented generation. And what that means is that you actually design the prompts and the context of an information for the chatbot in such a way that it is already customized. It, you retrieve knowledge from the medical field, put that into the context, and then the chat GPT, the large language model, can be more specific in terms of the recommendation. Here you see about the fluid that is uh, recommended for a patient here. If you would not do that prompt engineering and this retrieval augmented generation, you would have more hallucination and imprecise answers to that. So finally, this information, how we use knowledge graphs, how we access the knowledge graphs, how we model the knowledge, and how we combine symbolic, that means the knowledge graphs, and the sub-symbolic, the deep learning, the generative AI combinations, that is what we are driving for. And with that, we try to reduce the avoidable errors in the medical field as much as possible. There's work still to be done, but we are on a very exciting pathway here to do that. And as we speak, there are several trials going on where we actually explore the capabilities of such a system, symbolic and sub-symbolic combination of AI. With that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me.